Welcome to worship. I'm Pastor Paul here at St. John's and we're glad to have you with us. And for those who are joining us for the first time, thank you for tuning in. And I have my acolyte dozer who's trying to help me and uh, so that's part of life at home. Today we celebrate the, the Good Shepherd, Sunday of the Good Shepherd. And so we hear that Jesus is the Good Shepherd, we are the sheep of his pasture. He comes to us and calls us by name so that we may have abundant life. And so as we gather together, we will also be having Holy Communion. And so we'll invite you uh, to gather some uh, elements together, some bread and some wine, um, or grape juice if you've got that instead. And then when the time comes, we'll invite you to lift up the elements to be with us as part of of the consecration of the elements and then you can commune at home. We have a new giving opportunity. Uh, you will see how you can give on the bottom of the page, there, there at the bottom of the screen, there is through our website and also through the, the post office, uh, giving it to, sending it to our address. This time, I'd like to join together as we, as we make the sign of the cross and begin our worship. Uh, Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Joined to Christ in the waters of baptism, we are raised with him to new life. Let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning you created us in your image and planted us in a well-watered garden. In the desert, you promised pools of water for the parched, and you gave us water from the rock. When we did not know the way, you sent the good shepherd to lead us to still, good, still, to still waters. At the cross, you watered us from Jesus' wounded side, and on this day, you shower us again with the water of life. We praise you for your salvation through water, for the water in this spot, and for all water everywhere. Bathe us in your forgiveness, grace, and love. Satisfy the thirsty and give us the life that only you can give. Do you be given honor and praise through Jesus Christ our Lord in the unity of the Holy Spirit now and forever. Amen. We'll join together in our gathering song.
Let us pray. O God, our shepherd, you know your sheep by name and lead us to safety through the valleys of death. Guide us by your voice that we may walk in certainty and security to the joyous feast prepared in your house through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. At this time, I'd like for you to receive the peace of Christ. Remember that on that night in which he, of the resurrection, he came to his disciples who were afraid and he showed himself and took away that fear. And so that same peace comes to us. The peace of the Lord be with you always. This time, if you have others that you are gathering with, I invite you to share peace with one another. If you are by yourself, you are not by yourself because we are gathered with you and may you experience Christ's peace. Hi, children of God. Thanks for joining me today. It is Good Shepherd Sunday and you're going to hear scripture passages about Jesus being the Good Shepherd and about going beside still waters and that Jesus is with us wherever we go. I thought it would be great to take a look at our board about Jesus being the good shepherd of our little sheep. When our children are baptized and they join our family, they get, and they join God's family, they get a sheep with their name on it and a date of their baptism on it. And so this visual reminds us that we are all sheep for our good shepherd, Jesus. And this sheep, these sheep, even though we can't get together in our congregation right now, I have been amazed at the way our community has been working outside of the walls of our church. We have been emailing each other and sending messages to each other. I'm so thankful for the time I get to spend on Zoom with some of you for Sunday school times on Wednesday mornings and for confirmation times and for the emails that just check in on how I'm doing. Our community, our church community, our family exists and gathers within the walls of our sanctuary. But during this time, we're being church outside of the walls. We're celebrating our people outside of the building. And I hope you've had a chance to leave some chalk drawings of encouragement and support to people who are walking through your neighborhood, or that you've put hearts in your windows like we talked about, or other signs in your windows to make sure that people know that the community that loves them still exists, even when we don't gather here in the church. I think that's an amazing thing, and I'm so proud of all of you who are doing the things to keep our community strong. So send the email, send a text, do a Facebook post. I would love to see what you're up to. Send us pictures and keep our community strong because we are all the sheep to our Good Shepherd, Jesus. And even when we're not together in our building, our community is still strong. Will you pray with me? Good morning, God. Thank you for sending Jesus. He reminds us that we're all a part of your family. And even when we can't gather inside, help us reach out to each other outside. in safe ways. Amen. Thanks for joining me. I hope you have a wonderful week. Our first reading is from Acts. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and fellowship, to the breaking of bread and the prayers. Awe came upon everyone because many wonders and signs were being done by the apostles. All who believed were together and had all things in common. They would sell their possessions and goods and distribute the proceeds to all as any had need. Day by day, as they spent much time together in the temple, they broke bread at home and ate their food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having the goodwill of all the people. And day by day, the Lord added to their number those who were being saved. We'll read the psalm responsively if you'd like to follow along in your Bible and read the 
even numbered passages, that's an option. Otherwise, they will appear at the bottom of your screen. Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord my whole life long. Our second reading is from 1 Peter. For it is a credit to you if, being aware of God, you endure pain while suffering unjustly. If you endure when you are beaten for doing wrong, what credit is that? But if you endure when you do right and suffer for it, you have God's approval. For to this you have been called, because Christ also suffered for you, leaving you an example so that you should follow in his steps. He committed no sin, and no deceit was found in his mouth. When he was abused, he did not return abuse. When he suffered, he did not threaten, but he entrusted himself to the one who judges justly. He himself bore our sins in his body on the cross so that free from sins, we might live for righteousness. By his wounds, you have been healed. For you were going astray like sheep, but now you have returned to the shepherd and guardian of your souls. Our holy gospel for today is from the gospel of St. John, the 10th chapter. Jesus said, very truly, I tell you, anyone who does not enter the sheepfold by the gate, but climbs in by another way is a thief and a bandit. The one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him and the sheep hear his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all his own, he goes ahead of them and the sheep follow him because they know his voice. They will not follow a stranger, but they will run from him because they do not know the voice of strangers. Jesus used this figure of speech with them, but they did not understand what he was saying to them. So again, Jesus said to them very truly, I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who come before me are thieves and bandits, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters by me will be saved and will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. The gospel of the Lord. Let us pray. Gracious Lord, our creator, redeemer, we give thanks for the blessings of this day and the life that we have in you. We give thanks that you are the good shepherd of the sheep, that you have come to call us each by name, that we may follow in faith and learn from your ways. Guide us now that we may experience the abundance of life in you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Dear friends, grace and peace be unto you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Our gospel today it concludes with, I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. This is the Sunday of the Good Shepherd in which we, take, we learn about this ancient image of, 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 of the shepherd leading the flock and Jesus calling us each by name and inviting us into this life of goodness, a life that is different from the ways of this world, a life that that experiences the fullness of God as God desired and intended it for us. And so he said, I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. What does it mean to have abundant life? 
What are we talking about here when we use the image of green pastures? When I think about abundance in my life, I'm grateful for my family. I'm grateful for uh, the life that I have with, with my wife and with my children. Uh, this time of, of home uh, detention, you might say, has, has been kind of nice because I get to spend time with at least two of my three children in meaningful ways. And I get to share and love and delight and give thanks for the goodness that God has provided. When I think about abundance, I think about the gift of, of extended family uh, in, in, in what these people have meant for me. Uh, just the other day, I celebrated my dad's 89th birthday. Of course, he's, he passed away a couple of years ago, but his presence still it shapes and informs and guides me and reminds me of what does it mean to follow in faith. So I count that as abundance. The, the hope that I have in, in God and in Christ was, was shared with me from both my parents. And, and so this is, is the hope that I have, that, that, that God would continue to bring abundance in, in my life. Think about daily bread, you know, the fact that I have a, a, a paycheck to, to sustain me and allows me to care for others as well. I'm so grateful for that. I'm grateful for you to make that possible. And at the same time, I think about uh, the news reports that nearly half the nation's workforce is now out on unemployment. I, I hope that I've not heard that correctly, but holy cow. I mean, we're talking over 30 million people are on unemployment and are needing assistance in order to provide for their daily bread. You know, when we think about what does it mean for God to provide abundantly, you know, in those times of scarcity, in those times of uncertainty, uh, it's easy for us to, to, to think, oh, I've got to do it all by myself and for the fear and the anxiety to rise. And yet God says, I want you, I want to lead you in and out to find pasture in order to find that important stuff. Sometimes, sometimes what it means to experience daily bread is to experience the generosity of others. Those of us like myself that have stable income and how we can be loving and caring towards the needs of others. And we're always called to live in community. And this is what it means. And this time hopefully will be short lived and we will be able to move back into a place where people can again be experience full employment. But it's tough right now and people are anxious and insecure. So what does it mean to have life abundantly? Our first lesson today talked about what does it mean to experience life in God. It was the day after the Holy Spirit was poured out on the day of Pentecost, what we call the birth of the, of the early church. Peter had, was filled with the Holy Spirit and proclaimed life and hope and the forgiveness of sins and, and that Jesus Christ, the Son of God, died for our sins. And people were so moved by that moment, they asked, how can I become a Christian? How can I experience life with God in this way? And Jesus and, and Peter said, repent and be baptized. And we are told that more than 3,000 people, 3,000 souls became a part of the church on that day. But now, now they needed to understand more fully. What is it that I've signed up for? What is it that I'm hoping in? And so what they had to do was four things. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching. They devoted themselves to fellowship, to the breaking of bread and of prayer. These things began to shape their life in Christ so that they could begin to hear Jesus calling them by name so they could hear the shepherd's voice 
as he calls us into this abundant life and leads us in important ways. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching because, remember, Jesus had already ascended into heaven at this point, and so they weren't going to experience him firsthand in, in the same way as the disciples did in the incarnational way of, of how Jesus walked this earth. And so they needed to learn the stories. Peter, tell us about what it was like when Jesus called you in faith. What it was like on that day when he met you by the seashore and and there was the great catch of fish. Tell us about what that experience and, and help us to understand what you, when you said, I don't think I belong. I don't feel like I'm good enough. And yet he said, no, Peter, I want you to follow me anyway. Because who of us have not been like that? Where we've looked at ourselves and our estimation of our own abilities and who we are as a child of God falls far short of what we would hope that it could be. And yet Jesus calls us by name and calls us into the mission in the work of the church. And so next comes, how do I learn my place? What is this church all about? What does it mean that, G what did Jesus really teach us about what does it mean to be a disciple? So we, they learned from the apostles about Jesus' Sermon on the Mount, where he talked about that discipleship, where he turned the values of the world upside down. And he talked about that our lives are ones of, of servanthood and care for others. He talked about that, you know, how people live by the adage, an eye for an eye, and they're all out for revenge. But we as Christians are to follow in such a way that it's no longer an eye for an eye, but love your enemy and pray for those who persecute you. How do we begin to transform this world around us? By Jesus' love, by the power of forgiveness, by compassion and mercy and grace, as opposed to judgment. Jesus was quite firm. He says, do not judge or you will be judged. Do not condemn or you will be condemned. And yet, these are the ways of the world that we find so easy. Even from a faithful perspective, we find fault with others. We want to put them down and say they're, they're not doing it well enough. Or they don't, that God's grace is not available for them. They've got to get their act figured out before God can love them. These are false teachings. Religious people use them all the time. But when we listen to what Jesus actually said, when we listen to his voice, we hear that our call is for love and compassion and mercy and grace. As the story of Acts goes on, they, part of their fellowship, their caring for one another, is they began to to share their goods. When they would sell their, their goods and their wares as part of their business, they would share out of their livelihood for the good of the whole community. Things that they didn't need anymore, they would sell and they would give as an offering to support so that everyone had enough. Well, that doesn't sound like America, does it? It doesn't sound like how our lives are shaped. We are told over and over again that we are to take care of ourselves. We're supposed to pull ourselves up by the bootstraps that, that um, you know, it is our personal responsibility and that we have to succeed. And, and this is, it's up to us. You know, the, the individual is prized above all. But these messages are contrary to what the gospel teaches. You see, part of the way in which we pray, give us this day our daily bread, and God answers that, is, is that God provides our daily need. And when we have more than what we need each day, we have an opportunity to share. And in this fellowship with one another, we support and encourage one another. Jesus shared a parable that taught this value that we find very difficult. 
Do you remember it was the parable of, of the landowner who was trying to hire people to work in his vineyard. The harvest was ready and he needed people to go out. And so he went out first thing in the morning and he hired a whole bunch of people to go work in the vineyard and he promised them, I'll give you the usual daily wage. And then he came back out at nine o'clock in the morning, there were still people there. And he said, well, there's still plenty of work in my vineyard. Go to work there and I will pay you what is right. And several other times, even to the last hour of the day, he went back and found more people that were hungering for work. Can you imagine that today? With 30 million people out of work and wondering about how will they be provided for? How will they provide for their, love, their families? You know, what would it mean for one to be generous like that and say, come and work for me and I will pay you what is right. And you're thinking, okay, well, even if I only get an hour's work, at least it's a little something. But in the story, we learn that the landowner, God, was generous to everyone, giving everyone what they needed for that day everyone the daily wage and and yet the values of this world are such that that those who came last you know the first ones hired they complained because they said wait a second we've worked and labored and slaved all day long and you're giving them the same amount as us what does it feel like now that the economy is shut down and COVID-19 and if people are saying you're not deserving a feeding of your family today. You see, God's kingdom is based on different principles, not based upon what we've earned, but how God loves. David understood this. When he wrote this beautiful Psalm that we have trusted in for all these generations, Psalm 23, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Think about that. I don't have to be afraid because God provides. He leads me to green pastures and leads me beside still waters. I shall not want. I don't have to be afraid because God will provide. What does it mean to trust God in that way? That's part of what this devoting ourselves to the apostles' teaching is all about, is learning to trust God. Learning to trust God, learning to trust that God will provide when the ways of the world teach us otherwise. David continues, you restore my soul, O Lord, and guide me along right pathways for your name's sake. Think about that. Again, we come and devote ourselves to the apostles' teaching. We, we devote ourselves to worship and gathering as the community of faith so that God may speak and guide us in important ways to restore our soul, to refresh us, to take away the angst and the fear, and to give us hope, to lead us in ways that reflect the goodness of God not for our sake, not that we could have a good reputation, but for God's sake, that God may be honored by our lives and how we live in trust and hope in who God is. David acknowledges that life's not always easy. There are times when we are very much afraid that we are concerned, you know, that we face the real struggle of life and death. And yet David says, even in that valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You ever hear the, the, the proverb, uh, spare the rod, spoil the child? <laughs> it's in the Bible. And yet we hear a different image of what that is like. But sparing the rod would mean that God doesn't guide at all that we don't provide the guidance. It's not a, a punishment for not doing things right. It is the instruction, the guidance, the care, the love to shape a person 
Otherwise, they're left to their own desires and they become spoiled and, 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 and selfish in all kinds of ways. We guide and we struck with love and compassion. And this is what we hear from this song. And it goes on to talk about the goodness and mercy is provided because God makes our cup to overflow. And this is where we find our life always. Those new Christians, they thought they had a lot to learn because this was all a new thing to them. Part of the struggle for us as Christians is that many of us have lived this whole life in Christ. And so sometimes we have allowed ourselves to become deaf to what Jesus is trying to teach us. We practice this life of faithfulness, of going to worship and things like that, but we let the ways of the world guide us instead of Jesus. So this is an invitation again to devote ourselves that we may receive guidance that provides, that we may be led in and out to good pasture, that we might experience life abundantly, that we don't have to be afraid because our Lord will guide us through those difficulties and those times of evil and that time of the shadow of death and lead us into new life. That Jesus comes and brings the forgiveness of sins. He brings compassion and healing and hope and he calls us each by name. He calls us that we might hear, that we might find life in him. And so listen carefully, listen, because he's calling you. He's calling you once again to live that life of faithfulness. He's calling you to renew that devoted life where you find your life in Jesus and it's worth giving your all. He calls your name with love and mercy and compassion. He brings the forgiveness of sins so that we can experience life abundantly. Thanks be to God. Amen.
even though I walk through the valley of death, you restore my soul and you give me rest. Oh, the memories of your faithfulness, you restore my soul and you give me rest. You restore my soul. by the promise, hope of healing and resurrection, we join the people of God in all times and places in praying for the church, the world, and all who are in need. Shepherding God, we thank you for the educational ministries of your church. Enrich the work of teachers, professors, mentors, advisors, and faculty at colleges, seminaries, and learning sites. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Creating God, we praise you for those who maintain and operate farm equipment, for those who plant and harvest crops, for local farmers markets, and for those involved in agriculture in any kind. Strengthen their hands as they feed the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Guiding God, no one should be in want. Bid the nations to return to your paths of righteousness and inspire our leaders to walk in your ways so that all may have the opportunity to live abundantly and sustainably. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Comforting God, you carry us tenderly. We pray for those who walk through dark valleys, overshadowed by anxiety and overwhelmed with suffering. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Nurturing God, you desire justice for the hungry. Bless advocacy work, food pantries, and feeding ministries in our congregations. May none of our neighbors lack for basic needs. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Everlasting God, your beloved, have heard your voice. You have called them by name and guided them to your side in death. We thank you for their lives of faithful witness. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. With boldness in your love, Almighty God, we place all for whom we pray into your eternal care. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. At this time is our time of offering, and once again, you may give online uh, or through our church website. You can do it also by mailing into uh, the church office or by this new opportunity called Venmo. And uh, so we hope that you can participate in this way. Let's remember in the book of Acts, as we heard our story today, that people shared our lives together <laughs> with glad and generous hearts.
He's waiting for me to share with glad and generous hearts. Now, let us pray our offering prayer. Merciful God, our ordinary gifts seem small for such a celebration, but you make of them an abundance, just as you do with our lives. Feed us again at this table for service in your name, in the strength of the risen Christ. Amen. This time I invite you to lift the elements as I do, that they may be consecrated along with these. On the night in which he's betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, giving thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body, given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. At this time, I invite you to receive the sacrament of grace. And if you are with, gathered with others, if you could share it with one another. pray as our Lord taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. This time, receive our Lord's blessing. May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. Life-giving God, you have fed us through your word and our hearts burn within us. Through this meal, you have opened us to your presence. Now send forth to share, send us forth to share the gifts of Easter with all in need, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Receive our Lord's blessing. May the one who brought forth Jesus from the dead raise you to new life, fill you with hope, and turn your mourning into dancing. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine,
three, two, one. We begin uh, today that with the sign of the cross, uh, and that Mike's the sign. I am just struggling today. <laughs> well, we can let David bleep that one out. What's that? We can let David bleep that one out. Yeah, yeah. Well, you you don't need to send that one to David. <laughs> well, I think we should. <laughs>